What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video and today we've got some UFC 4 gameplay in the background We are talking about the next UFC event which is on the 16th of January Which is Max Holloway versus Calvin Qatar. I can never pronounce his last name UFC on ABC, it's just a fight night but a pretty good main event I think the main event and co-main event are pretty sick Admittedly, I'm very nervous for this main event, but I'll get into that in a bit. Um, I'm going to be skipping the prelims because I don't want this first video of the year for this prediction thing to be too long. And the only person I really care too much about is Phil Hawes or Phil Hayes. I don't know if you pronounce his name. And to be honest, he'll probably lose. I just have a feeling about it, so I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to skip the first card, first fight on the main card, which is uh, Panahili Soruna versus Dusko Tararakiv. They're 7-0 and 10 -0. I had to write their names down because... There is no way I am remembering their names. So the first fight, we have Jacqueline Buckley. I hope I'm pronouncing his first name right. I, I butcher names. There's one thing I'm going to tell you guys right now, and probably every prediction video, I butcher names like mad, versus Alessio Di Corico. I have to write down the names or I will forget. Buckley is 12-3, and three and um, Corico is Chirico. Sorry, is 12-5. and five. Also, guys, I've got like a dog cam in the background, so I hope you appreciate that. Uh, Buckley's just coming off two KO wins after a loss to Kevin Holland uh, and KO of the year with that spinning back kick that was just insane. Alicia at the minute is on a three losing streak, including a loss as well to Kevin Holland. Alicia has never really impressed me in any way. He obviously ha is coming off three losses. None of them are KO losses, admittedly. They're all decision losses. I don't believe he's ever lost by KO in his entire career. But I am going to get right out there with this one really quick. And I'm just going to go with Buckley. Gets this finish in the second round. And makes it three second round knockouts in a row. And now we move on to the next fight. Which is Santiago Ponzinibbio. I think I nailed that name. Against Lee Jaling. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't pronounce his name. I don't know how to. Lee. I'm just going to call him Lee. I do quite like Santiago. I think he's a great fighter. Unfortunately, he's been pretty inactive. I don't think he's fought since... Uh, yeah, November 2018. But other than that, he's on a seven win streak since 2015. So in those th that three year span from 2015 to 2018, he has won seven times. He hasn't fought since November 2018. So if ring rust is a thing, you know, it's going to affect him badly. Lee is just coming off a decision loss to Neil Magny. I think Neil Magny is actually doing quite well at the minute, personally. Uh, but he's a tough motherfucker. Uh, I don't think that Lee is top tier, personally. But if ring rust is a thing then I could see Santiago generally struggling. But I'm going to say for this one, I'm going to jump right out with my decision that Santiago wins on points after a slow round one to win this fight 29-28 across the board and uh, puts himself up for the eighth win in a row and hopefully stays healthy, stays fit and carries on his winning ways. So we've smashed through the first two, well, the first three technically, uh, on the event and we're going to go on to the co-main event. I've got a lot to say about both the co-main event and the main event. Obviously, I do take notes so I don't forget everything. So if you guys see me look down, that is why, because I'm taking notes. We've got Carlos Condit, 31 and 13 against Matt Brown, 24 and 17. Both men have fought tough dudes. Carlos has had some wars and he should have won the title, in my opinion. I believe he beat Robbie Lawler. You guys love let me know on your thoughts on that, but it is what it is. Oh, well, I can't go back and change. I can't be a judge. Carlos Condit did recently lose five fights in a row until October where he beat Court McGee on point. So I think maybe that will boost his confidence. I think going into that, that fight, he was quite low in confidence. I think had he still been on a losing streak and not fought Court McGee, I think he would have been cut from the UFC. Because he's on a one-win streak, they want to see what he can do. In my opinion, this is both men's last chance to get to the top. I don't think either are good enough now. I think both of them have been in too many great wars, too many great fights. Carlos Condit has gone five rounds with GSP and Robbie Lawler, and he's gone three rounds with Nick Diaz, Johnny Hendricks, Neil Magny. He's beat Dan Hardy, Roy McDonald, Thiago Alves. It's just, he's got a hell of a resume, and it's something he, I think he'll look back on and be proud of. But as of right now, I do not see him winning a title. I do not see him getting to the top five in that division. I don't think he's good enough anymore. Whether his confidence has been rattled, you know, I don't look at him and go, oh, he doesn't get as many finishes as he used to. It is what it is that happens when these fighters tend to get older. He, you know, the natural born killer is still the natural born killer. When he smells blood, he'll attack. But unfortunately, I don't think he'll ever get to the top again. I think he's just fighting at this point to stay relevant and keep the pay going. And on to Matt Brown. I don't like him. I just don't. I'm not a fan. His last 10, he's 4 and 6, which is pretty good. His recent win uh, against Diego Sanchez and Ben Saunders, but his last fight he was KO'd. 
by uh, Miguel Beza. I don't know how to pronounce his name either, but he was recently, he's coming off a KO loss, and he obviously has come off two KO losses before as well, um, before these, before those wins. So I think his chin is getting weaker as times go. Uh, Brown has fought tough dudes as well, man. He's fought Cowboy, he's fought Lawler, he's fought Hendrick, he's fought Wonderboy, and he beat Wonderboy, but the other three he lost to. Um, but in my opinion, I think Carlos Condit wins this one by KO to make a big statement in the third round, and they give him some top weight contender, and uh, and then he gets uh, his head kicked in again. But for this fight, I say Carlos Condit wins this one in the third round by KO, and uh, Matt Brown just gets tired, gets sloppy, and Carlos Condit lands a nice counter and puts him away. And now we move on to the main event, a fight I'm very nervous about. We have Max Holloway at 21 and 6 against Calvin Qatar, 22 and 4. Is it Qatar? Is it Qatar? Am I overdoing it? Is it just Qatar? 22 and 4, anyways. I'm going to stop waffling. I seriously love Max. I can't stress it enough. I know people obviously have different feelings about every fighter, but I love Max Holloway. Um, I personally think he won both of the Volkanovski fights. I am slightly biased. He definitely won the second one, but I do believe he won the first one as well, which I know most people will disagree with me. But I think he definitely won the second one. I think even if you're not a Max fan, you can agree that he won that second fight personally anyways. Before the Volkanovski fights, he had just beaten Edgar, and before that he had lost to Dustin Poirier in the featherweight division, in the lightweight division, sorry. So I suppose it does count as a record, but it was not a big deal because he went up to challenge, and it's, you know, it's not his weight class that he runs at the moment. Um, but before that, he hadn't lost since 2013 against the notorious one, Conor McGregor. Uh, so he was on a hell of a streak, as we all know. You know, Max looked unbeatable at one point, and Volk just come out and just beat him, and I was disappointed by that, and I think Max still won. Personally, I think Max's pressure is going to be too much for Calvin. If he pressures and throws as much as he did against, say, Brian Ortega, not maybe he'll land as much because I think Calvin will move his head and he's a great boxer. He's a he's a fantastic boxer, actually. Um, and that's where the worry comes in. Calvin hits bloody hard, man, from his shots. And I, I it doesn't look like it's speed or precision. It's just pure strength. He looks like you owe him money when he hits you. That's what it looks like. He looks like he's angry at you and he, you owe him money. He wants to hurt you. Uh, you know, he's really aggressive striking, and I think I think it's fantastic. You know, his last eight fights in the UFC, which is all of his fights in the UFC, he's had eight. He's six and two, losing to um, Renito Conera and Zabi, which is a given because Zabi is a bit of a freak of nature in that division. But he's just come off a nasty KO win against um, Jeremy Stevens and a great war most uh, recently against Dan Eag, or Dan Eag, however you pronounce his name. And they were both fantastic fights, and, you know, Calvin's hands are vicious, bro. I could... I could see him KO, KOing anyone, in my opinion. He could KO anyone in that division, but Max is not that guy. Max is going to pressure him, he's going to smother him, he's going to bust him up. And do I think Max is going to is gonna um, finish Calvin? Absolutely not. Neither fighter has been finished. They've both had... So neither fighter has been KO'd. They've both had one submission loss. Uh, Calvin has three decision losses. Max has four decision losses. So it's going to be another decision loss, I think. But I'm going to say it's going to be a decision in the way of Calvin. I think Max Holloway wins this one on points, 49-46. And uh, maybe gives Calvin the uh, first or second round. And then unleashes uh, the Blessed Express and destroys Calvin Kater by points. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I think is going to happen. I know Calvin can finish anyone. He's got really powerful hands. But to count out anyone, especially Max, would be very, very stupid. But those are my predictions for this event guys let me know yours in the comments down below make sure especially you let me know your thoughts on the carlos condit and matt brown fight and the max holloway and calvin fight i'm majorly interested to see what people's thoughts are on the main event um it's gonna be a crazy one i'm really looking forward to it slightly nervous as well i'm rooting for max like mad uh you know i hope the two losses that he's had haven't uh shaken his confidence in any way because i'd be a bit disappointed if that was the case uh, you know, but he, you know, if he loses this, he's still only young, but he's fought some, fought some top dudes, and uh, I hope he uh, comes back with the win. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you have, be sure to leave a like, subscribe down below, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.